Welcome back to the Climbing Club and it's Boulder Qualification Day. Behind us the men are competing but we're going to start with the women. See some cool shots and behind the scenes interviews. Look, you know the drill by now, let's get cracking. Innsbruck, an iconic city where climbing takes centre stage. It's an event where every athlete would love to win and it all begins here with qualifying. The women got us started on what promises to be a dramatic few days of competition. We haven't seen Japan's Aimori compete since 2023, but the future Olympian is back and qualifies just outside of the top 10. Switzerland's Sofia Yokoyama had a few nervous moments while waiting for the results, finishing in joint 19th, despite getting four tops in her group. Because it was such a high scoring round, mistakes were punished. But USA's Annie Sanders got two flashes and quick sentence to qualify in fifth. Belgium's Chloe Collier might have been tired from last week's OQS and she didn't make the cut. Neither did South Korea's Cheon So, but we wanted to have a chat with the OQS qualifier. I just want to watch other climbers, how they prepared and also for me. And the biggest, biggest goal was just having fun on the world without pressure. It was not the best round for me because I was super tired from last OQS. Actually, I still cannot believe I can be in the Olympics. Janja Garmbret begins to build up towards the Olympics. The Slovenian superstar coming in joint fifth, just one attempt keeping her from a higher place, but four flashes to her name. Climbing next to her, and perhaps her closest competitor, Oriane Berton was in a different group and safely through. And we're beginning to see her form as she builds up towards the most important comp of her life. Oriane's teammate, Nali Migan, builds on her form with an impressive comp in Salt Lake City earlier in the season, and here in Innsbruck, she makes it through in joint first. She loves to climb in front of her home crowd, and Jessica Piltz always finds something a little extra in the sunshine of Innsbruck. I was quite nervous today before the qualifications. Um, it's been a while since I did an inter international competition, like my last one was in April and it was only bouldering. Um, so yeah, I'm a bit nervous, but um, yeah, qualification is done and went quite well, so it's a good start. Ayala Krem has had a bit of a mental reset recently and she looks like a different climber out on the mats. The Israeli athlete threw in first. Canada's Madison Richardson failed to climb three boulders in her session and she's outside of the top 20. It's always a brutal cut in qualifying as we lose most of the field. Also struggling was GB's Lucy Garlic and she came 33rd, but Team GB is generally on the up, so we caught up with Lucy. I think it went like okay, like I'm happy with some of them, really happy. Like I managed to execute quite quickly on some of them. But then yeah, the slab just <laughs> it got me. <laughs> I had no clue. <laughs> Everyone in the GB team I think has worked so hard. Obviously with the Olympics having four qualified and three in Budapest was like amazing to watch. So I think as like people do well, it almost like inspires the youngest to then do well. So yeah, it's really cool to see. Oceana McKenzie is also building up to the Olympics in a few weeks' time. She qualified in the top 10, and after the comp, we wanted to pick her brains about fueling for competition. We all know how important nutrition is for climbers. I've found someone who, well, let's be honest, is really good at comp climbing, so you are the person to ask about diet and food and how you manage it. So let's pretend that we're before a competition. What are you eating in the morning, presumably very early, before you get out on the mats and try to qualify? Um, for me, it's always oats in the morning. Um, yeah, usually I actually add like dark chocolate and peanut butter and some fruit. 
and that's perfect pre-comp breakfast. Mm -hmm. And why oats? Like, why is that your choice out of all the things? Um, usually it's really filling, so it keeps me going during the warm-up and everything. Um, and also it has good carbs for energy, and then the chocolate and peanut butter is just really for taste. <laughs> and I need to ask you about coffee, because like, I'm highly addicted myself, not an athlete. But do athletes drink coffee? Is that okay to do that, or does it make you a bit shaky out there? A lot of athletes do. I actually don't. I usually drink black tea in the morning. Um, yeah, I kind of find that sometimes it makes me a bit shaky and it's a bit unreliable, I guess, depending on how I'll feel. But I do enjoy coffee on a rest day sometimes. Um, when you're between, let's say it's a boulder and you're back in the tent, are you ever snacking on bars or energy gels? Does that come into it at all? Not much for me. Um, I usually have like about half a bar before I go into the cool zone, just to give me a little more energy. Um, but I also just kind of go off how I'm feeling. And then in terms of recovery, we've just finished, for example. Now, there isn't another round today, but what kind of foods are you looking to eat to recover better? Yeah, I actually usually find that if I have semis the next day after a quality round, I need to eat quite a bit to be recovered for the next day. Um, so for me, I mean, we're planning on getting smoothie bowls later on because of the hot weather. Um, but yeah, usually trying to get in quite a lot of protein for recovery and then also carbs for energy the next day. And then finally, really, outside of competitions, what's your favourite cheat meal? You know, your, your tasty uh, food of choice if you don't worry about nutrition or anything else. Um, maybe kimchi two-minute noodles or my sister makes amazing vegan croissants. So probably those two. That sounds really good. OK, well, thank you for telling me that. Best of luck for the competition and, of course, good luck for the Olympics. Thank you very much. Before we show you the men's qualifying, last night was the paraclimbing finals and we caught up with one of our athletes to do a kit check. Here at the IFSC we're always fascinated about what an athlete has in their climbing bag and I've managed to find Pavitra who is a paraclimber. So Pavitra, first of all, who do you climb for and which category do you climb in? So I climb uh, in category RP1, but normally I climb for AL1, but they merged uh, the categories, so now I'm RP1. <laughs> and Team Belgium, bright yellow I can see. Yes, Belgium, <laughs> go, go, go. <laughs> All right, well you're holding a bag in front of me, so what is inside it uh, and what do you bring to comps with you? For a competition, I don't take too much because otherwise you lose uh, uh, your, your things. So uh, the most important, of course, an extra T-shirt of the Bal Belgian uh, team. And of course, uh, my safety belt because it's uh, a special one. So this is something you wear whilst you climb? Yes, it's the most important thing. Otherwise, I can go to the climbing wall. <laughs> So explain your impairment just a little bit uh, and why that is so important. So uh, because I don't have uh, legs, it's important that I have a, a harness like this uh, because you don't need uh, to have your legs for uh, put that, uh, something uh, in. So uh, it make it easier and also having um, more uh, stuff on my back and so it's more safety. <laughs> yeah, because you, you campus the roots and your strength is just the best thing to watch. So I presume you don't want something that gets in the way of you doing that. No, it's really flexible so I can move really quick and good. So yeah, it's, it's helped me. And is that specially made for climbing or is that something you've used from somewhere else and brought it into climbing? No, uh, I used normally, the, when I was younger, the normal uh, safety belts, but uh, we contact the company, Bornac, and they make um, stuff for safety, rescue uh, stuff, and uh, they tell me, we have a special harness for you, you can uh, try it, and if you want, uh, you can buy it and uh, use it for the climbing. Hey, well, I'll keep an eye out for that, now I know. Uh, anything else in your bag, or is that it? I'm just going to look, but it will be nothing special. A carabine, maybe. Oh, no. Maybe something like Is it some kind of secret snack yeah, or food? Yes. Always secret. No, no. Magnesium. Ah, OK. Chalk, highly important. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, Pavitra, thank you so much for showing us. Uh, it's amazing every time you climb and the crowd goes absolutely crazy. Uh, we are actually just before the finals here. We snuck it in. How are you feeling? Are you feeling nervous? A little bit, but uh, a little bit nervous, it's always good for the competition. <laughs> and one more para comp to come after this in Arco, are you going to be there as well? Uh, we will uh, wait uh, of the result of this and then I will see. <laughs> well, thank you so much for showing me. Lovely to spend some time with you. There you go, that's what's in Pavitra's bag.
Pavitra won her category. So make sure you go and check out the live stream to catch up on hers and all the other athletes' climbs. Once the women had finished their round, the boulder wall was reset and it was time for the men to perform in front of a packed crowd. There were some tricky boulders on offer and a stacked field of athletes, so qualifying was going to be tough and we saw some big names miss out. Fresh from the OQS series and admitting he was feeling exhausted, South Korea's Jean Won Chon was outside of the 20 athletes who could go into semi-finals. Great Britain's Toby Roberts had a better qualifying. Four flashes taking him through just outside of the top 10, his Olympic preparation clearly on track. Jakob Schubert loves climbing in front of the Innsbruck crowd, but he'll be disappointed not to make the cut. He'll get another chance in lead and will be looking for some redemption. He came so close to an Olympic qualifying ticket in Budapest, missing out by only just one place. But Belgium's Nicolas Collin was back competing. Unfortunately, he was unlucky again, and he missed out on a semi-finals place. The Japanese team were on form. Serato and Racco is endlessly impressive, one to watch in Paris and easily through to the next round in Austria. His teammate, Tomoe Narasaki, won the first Cup of the Year in China, and the Japanese athlete might have a chance to win in Innsbruck, as he's also through. Tomoe's brother, Meichi, will join him there. Three flashes in his group, including the final delicate slab, but he's further down the order. Colin Duffy from the USA won double gold in Innsbruck in 2022, and he was looking powerful two years later in a venue that he clearly loves. Slovenia brought a big team to Innsbruck, and Andrzej Andrzej Prahak climbed all five boulders in his group, screaming his way through the climbs. Oscar Baudrillon from Canada was close, but he won't climb again in Boulder. Just a few days after qualifying for the Olympics, Alberto Gines Lopez was back climbing. He looked relaxed and comfortable on the wall, and he'll get more practice time in the semi-finals. At the OKs, I would say, like after I was told I got already qualified. I mean, it was right before uh, lead semis. But I was like, okay, I will keep focus. I really want to perform well, and at the end I did. But after that, I was like empty. Like yeah, I think it's, it has been like a few a few years with a lot of like pressure on myself, like doubting a lot about me and about my my level. Also, like the results didn't help at all. So yeah, like finding myself in the wall again, uh, feeling strong uh, and feeling confident was like amazing. So that's the end of the qualifying day. Tomorrow, well, things ramp up a little bit in terms of pressure. Semi-finals and finals, we'll see you there. And make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the action.